I, uh, yeah, yeah, that's your yeah. name. Squirrels got me. Big Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, 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 really cold and fun. Cold and fun. That's good that you think that of it because that's what deer hunting typically is, is cold and fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday morning, I'm glassing up on the pass and I see these deer moving. And I'm like, ooh, there's deer moving. All of a sudden, I just see this person just head down, just hauling ass wearing shorts and a t-shirt with a pack on. And I'm like, I'm like, is that hard? My dad always talks about floating through the woods like the autumn breeze. So, so Robert's When you're the 275 pounds, I don't know how you do that, but. The Freightliner? <laughs> it's just like a creeper. He's kind of up in the corner watching what's going on down there. Yeah. You know? He's like, you know, he's up there slapping it, pissing all over everything. Is it warm yet? <laughs> How did you know the name of the actor? That's right. I know. What did you say his name? Her Herve Velichos. <laughs> you know what Pertinier means? If you know what Pertinier means and you live in America, you're a redneck too. <laughs> Welcome to the Log Talk Podcast, brought to you by Pertnir Outdoors. Hey everybody, and welcome to a little bonus episode here of Log Talk with Pertnir Outdoors. If you've uh, been tracking with us here over the last couple of weeks, we did a live podcast uh, slash live video training, um, working with John Legansky of Whitetail 101 back uh, about a week and a half ago. And uh, so we did that on Facebook, had a live video, and uh, recorded the audio of that. And um, so I wanted to post that up here as a podcast episode because I know not everyone has uh, the time to sit down and watch a video uh, nowadays. So this is just uh, the audio recording of that video. If you uh, if you like what you hear here, um, or if you want to see some of the things that we were talking about, it was kind of an interactive discussion between myself, John, uh, Dan Zaylor, Danny Boy. And my buddy Jeff Jones, who is brand spanking new to hunting, and this is his first season in. And that was kind of the theme of this discussion was uh, kind of a little bit uh, down to the wire here and what sort of things a new hunter needs to be thinking about. If they don't have any gear, they don't know where they're going to hunt, um, and we're a month, month and a half out from hunting season, what sort of things should you be thinking about? So um, hopefully this is a, a good conversation, some good information here, and it's uh, fun hearing the mindset and the place where a new hunter's at. And um, there's some great resources out there to help you get yourself up to speed so when you hit the woods this fall, you can feel comfortable and feel confident that you can fill your tag. So um, with that, I would just point you over to John's uh, website and uh, what John's doing. There, we talked quite a bit. That was what the real point was of this, was to highlight John's program, uh, Whitetail 101, through his sportsman101.com. So check him out on social media. And if you're interested in, uh, in working with him directly to get some one-on-one -on -one coaching or to go through his online uh, virtual, I don't know if it's virtual, but his interactive training, um, it's, uh, if you're familiar with like Elk 101, it's very similar um, set up to that and a uh, nice little program walking you through all the steps and all the things you should be thinking about as you're walking into season. So check that out. Thanks for listening and have a good weekend. Late. Yeah, um, we're, we're on hours. Eastern time, man. Yeah, I know. I'm already in the pumpkin. In the morning. Okay, so um, I guess I'll, I'll kind of run point to begin. Uh, thank you, Billy, to Jeff, Danny, for, for showing up, guys. Tonight, what we're primarily going to try and focus on is any of you guys who either, you know, didn't draw a tag that you applied for in your area, you know, you, you let life kind of get in the way. There's been a lot going on. Um, and you forgot to, to apply, uh, your season's not necessarily over. Um, I have to say up front that, you know, there's good and bad people hunting this year and fishing, buying those licenses. So, you know, good for the people going outdoors and for the revenue, not so great for some of us who want to pick up those over-the-counter tags. So we're kind of running out of time right now. Uh, so we're going to... Uh, you know, we're going to start with the tag section and then stick around with us because if you guys haven't, um, you know, decided on exactly where you want to hunt or what you need to do in order to kind of to, to figure out what you need to hunt there, whether it be we'll cover a little bit of public uh, and private land. And then we're going to do a little bit of Q&A at the end. So 
for those of you guys joining us via Facebook, which should be pretty much everybody but us on video, uh, go ahead and tap questions into the chat as we go. Uh, Danny boy is going to be kind of jotting them down. And then Danny, if there is a question that's like kind of like relevant to what we're talking about right there, just go ahead and uh, interrupt one of us and, and say, Hey, we got a question in the chat. Otherwise we'll, we'll cover them all at the end. Sound yep. like a plan. Yep. Perfect. Uh, so Billy, anything uh, bef before I kind of jump right into it? Yeah, I guess um, just to kind of lead off, I know that you, you know, just kind of update everybody on, on exactly who you are, because some folks may have heard you on the podcast back in, I think that was in March uh, with us, but what are, what are you doing? What's your, uh, your program and your company you've got that you're, you know, and what you're trying to do here with these little Skype videos to help people get uh, ready for hunting? You know, what's your, what you're doing? Explain what you're doing. Yeah, see, Billy, that's why you have a podcast and I don't. It's because right. you remind people to plug their stuff. Oh, thank you. I'm on uh, my four so seltzer water, so strap in. He's getting nuts. Uh, my name is John Legansky. I operate a website called sportsman101.com. And the flagship program, I'll go ahead and just share my screen here. It'll be a little easier. I will not show um, sportsman101.com. Uh, it started as just a single program, Whitetail 101, um, designed by a guy that was born and raised in the Chicagoland area, hunting and fishing, which is not terribly common. There are people who do it for sure, but it's just not like a, it's not commonplace like where you guys are from um, in smaller, you know, arguably more rural areas. And growing up, I was, you know, I was the kid that I always had a deer or two hanging in the garage growing up. And um, more and more, as I got older, kids started asking me and then adults started asking me, can you take me hunting? Can you show me what I need, you know, to bow hunt or, or the tags and all that. So I put together a program called, called White Tail 101. Um, it's like 35 modules. They take an average of like 20 to 30 minutes each, mostly video based. There's some, um, there's some text images and the biggest benefit in my mind of the program is that it'll get you like, I would say like probably three, four years ahead of somebody who's just starting out trying to like piecemeal together on YouTube and figure this stuff out on their own. You can do that, but all the people that I've known to, to do that, especially with deer hunting, it's uh, the pathway to entry is kind of high. And that's why we're starting in the beginning tonight um, for free with all the tags and stuff uh, is because that oftentimes people, they kind of fall behind the eight ball and then they were so focused on the, you know, getting the gun, figuring out ammunition, you know, you see it all the time, people in the, the hunting groups and stuff asking questions about what types of arrows they should be using or this or that. And there's a bunch of snobs in those Facebook groups, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, the message is you just kind of get, you get kind of bullied. So um, I know I don't like to spend my time as a grown man, just getting like, you know, pardon my French, but like shit on by like Facebook trolls. So Whitetail 101 was basically designed to allow you to just sit down. And if you were to put, let's say a half hour a day, four or five days a week in for a month or two, like you're going to be, you're going to be ready to go out and you're, you're at least going to know like, okay, yeah, I bumped a deer. I didn't see any today, but you're going to have a, a base level of knowledge where now you know the questions to ask and search YouTube or go to the range and ask, you know, some guys that you meet there. So it's, there's uh, it, it's, it's built in a way where it takes somebody who's just never spent time outdoors, wants to go out and, uh, and try and acquire their protein and give them a really good, reasonable chance at doing that safely, ethically, legally, arguably within 30 to 60 days, which is about how long we have left. So, but you, you kind of got to get on it. Otherwise, um, you know, you're, you could still go hunting, but your, your odds of success go dramatically down. And that's going to kind of be the theme tonight is like, you know, I, I think Bill and, and Danny, you guys have probably agree that I would say maybe 80% of your success in the woods happens probably before the season starts. And then the other 20% happens before you even get out to your stand. Yeah. You know, basically when you're out there, you're just executing all the, all the research and, and what you've done ahead of time. And now it's time to kind of enjoy the hunt. It's yeah. your success is mostly de determined before you go out. Yeah. And what's interesting about this time we're in right now is that, you know, there's a, a massive influx of new hunters that have 
that have hit the ground. And Jeff is joining us tonight as a, a brand spanking new hunter, like literally just finishes hunter's ed and archery ed here out of New York. And, um, there's so much information out there and there, and so much of it is at such a high level that I think what you're doing with whitetail 101, you know, it's focused on, you know, going from the ground level with nothing just to get you comfortable from step by step into getting ready to go into the woods and try to kill a deer and try to put meat on the table. So ultimately that's the, the goal when you're going out to get your hunting license is to actually find success in the woods. But what we're trying to do with these sorts of conversations is break it down, make it a little bit easier to digest and, you know, answer those simple, basic questions. Like I passed my test. Now, what the hell do I do? Cause to your point, John, you go into those Facebook groups and, or anywhere where you might be interacting with people or even just going into a store, it can be intimidating. You don't really know what questions to ask because you don't want to feel dumb. I feel I, I do the same thing when it comes to fishing and things like that, because I, when it comes to fly fishing, like Jeff, for example, is all in on fly fishing, fly fishing gets it. I it's over my head. So I feel like an idiot when I walk into a fly shop to ask questions, cause I don't know what to say or what to ask. So ultimately that's what we're trying to do with this short, you know, video tonight. And then, you know, what you have to offer with your program is on your time, on your speed and learning what you need to know in digestible pieces so you can get ready to go out in the woods. So that's what we're, that's what we're trying to achieve here. And, you know, talking about the first step after you pay, after you pass your test is, you know, you, you brought up tags right off the bat, John, is where do you go once you, uh, you get that hunter's license and purchase that, you know, where do you go to get your license and we'll get your tags. So that can differ all around the country, but, um, for us here in the East, it's a pretty easy process to get tags. There isn't much of a, like a lottery or anything like that. So I guess kind of pass it back to you, John, on, you know, what you wanted to chat about tag wise. Yeah. So, well, so for me coming up in Illinois, there, I mean, there's a reasonable number of hunters in our state because there's just a lot of people. Uh, it's, just, you know, it's just a, it's, it's a heavily populated state. Um, even, even though there are a lot of people, a lot of hunters, we have a healthy deer population. Uh, I think on average, it's like 260,000 or something in the state. And we typically call, I think it's between 60 and 80,000 on average, maybe a little bit more than that. If, if there was like a high population year, um, well, you know, if you, a lot of people, they, they, they go to apply for like a gun tag and that's fair. Um, but, and there's usually two lotteries for, um, shotgun in our state can't hunt rifle cause it's very flat. There's a lot of people. Um, if you don't get one, you know, during those two draws, you're probably not going to get a buck tag for like for shotgun hunting, but you can still, in most cases, depending on the County, as long as, as long as they didn't have a rough year, they, they weren't hit with like disease. And as, as you guys get into this, you'll understand some of those, those common diseases, uh, those acronyms, you know, CWD and EHD and stuff. Um, but as long as not, uh, none of that's going on, you can still typically go and just over the counter, uh, go to Walmart, right? Uh, or a sporting goods store. And they have, they probably do it the same way in New York, right? Or they just have a DNR machine or whatever, right there in the sporting goods counter, same place they'll sell all the, the fishing and fly fishing, uh, you know, ammo and stuff, equipment. Um, so just flag down an employee and say, Hey, I want to, you know, I want to buy an over the counter tag. You can usually get a doe tag, if not multiple right over the counter, even during season, often like halfway or two thirds through the season with a gun, um, right there. Like if you take your doe and you're like, I want to go hunting again, <laughs> go down to the Walmart and ask them. Um, not always. And not, you know, depending where you're at, uh, in the state and again, either County or unit wise. So like, um, I want to like, uh, Bill, are you able to share your screen? Cool. Um, if, if you just want to narrate, I, I just want to like, if you pull up like the, the New York state DNR website, um, and oftentimes here's a, like a, a hot tip guys is like, <laughs> Illinois, uh, does not have the best, uh, website. And I've realized that out of the 50 states, like none of them are created equal. Some have better ones, some have worse websites. And so what I've found, if you're having a hard time navigating the website, and I've spent a little bit of time on New York's, it's, it's better than ours, but that's not saying much. 
Hmm. But if you're having trouble finding what you're looking for, I literally just type into Google yeah. because it's always on their, their website, right? The information you're looking for is there. They might, they just might not have, they might've put a broken link <laughs> or, or something like that. You know, it's, I, I feel like developers and marketers, if you're working at a, uh, at a state DNR website instead of Google or Facebook or whatever, you're probably, you know, there's a packing order. We'll just say that. Yeah. But uh, if you're having trouble finding that, just use your favorite search engine and then utilize whatever that link is that brings you to the DNR website. Don't use external links like uh, blogs or whatever, because that stuff can go out of date very quickly. And so the other thing I want to, um, send you guys to like bill do you you probably have downloaded on your computer and like a like a physical paper copy the like in illinois we call it the um the hunting and trapping digest like the annual um yeah like they they put out their rules and regulations and their guidelines and quotas things like that yeah, yeah. so so new york state dec we call it the uh dec department of environmental conservation so they put that booklet out each year and uh, that'll have all the updates of the regs and everything that you need to know for the season dates and times and stuff like that. So, but the, I usually, to your point, John, I usually just use all that online and Google's your friend. I mean, if you kind of are even close to what you're trying to achieve with your searches, um, you know, if you're looking to buy a license in New York, New York has the new online uh, tag system where you can buy your tags right online. And like you can for many other states, but now you can do everything you need to do without going to a store or going to the local town hall, anything like that. So for me, you know, it's simple. You jump on the website. Uh, you, it's called decals is the name of the system. So you could just go to Google and search, you know, New York State DEC decals and New York State decals. And it's the first one that pops up. And then you uh you buy your sporting license online here and i kind of got our pictures blocking the screen but if you uh go up here and just sign up so if you don't already have a login it's like anything you can you can create your create your login and for most users you'll probably create that with your driver's license id number and jeff you you just went through this right did you buy your license today yeah, I did it today. Uh, it was a piece of cake. Went on. I think I still text you like fifteen questions, though, regardless. <laughs> so, uh, just in, like just in terms of what I get, what the tags, you know, just being new again. But yeah, it took me not even five minutes to do it. Super easy. Yep. Now, another good thing the state has actually done for uh, helping people get out there and do the hunting and get outside. So, Absolutely. if I can interject, though, so two things that that we really need to drive home here is that yes, Google is your friend, but you you need to be even if you find information on like a third party website, I don't care if it's field and stream, like a really reputable website, it's still your responsibility to have addressed the actual state agency about the laws. So because the, the, I use field and stream, outdoor life, all the, you know, all the, those, those popular names that once again, if you're using like Whitetail 101, for instance, I'm not the authority. I, I like Whitetail 101 is an amalgamation of all these different external resources, including, but definitely not limited to, you know, U.S. Fish and Wildlife and all that stuff, but use government resources. And then if you can't find the answer that you're looking for after using Google, here's a common mistake that people our age and younger make is that we just don't ask questions to human beings. There, there are offices, there are local offices all over your state <laughs> with people waiting to answer the phone and help you. Right. And I think people get a little bit intimidated because it's like, well, it's law enforcement. And that's true, but you're asking questions to avoid breaking the law. And if I'm a, a conservation officer, I would much rather answer your question ahead of time than you get tripped up and me have to catch you and write a bunch of paperwork. It saves me time and work to help you now. So anyways, so in that course, you can, you can get it for a week for free. And you can pro you could probably get through three out of the eight modules during that time, and then afterwards it's four dollars a month. So a as you're working through this, you know the point being, if you do have questions, you can email me. And then Bill, if you click on coaching towards the top, the menu there. Yep. 
Yeah. So you hunt is something that it's, it's more like this, but it's one-on-one. -on -one. So you can click the orange button there. You can scroll down. There's a little form. Uh, basically, and you'll notice, wait, before you scroll, scroll back up free. It's free right now. So I will give you, I will gift you one hour of my time. And all you got to do, so click buy now. It'll ask you for, you know, a name, email, whatever, password, and then Billy Pop. Uh, and, and it'll give you access to the calendar. It'll ask you a few questions ahead of time. Um, you know, like, have you purchased a hunting license before? Those kinds of things. You know, have you ever shot a gun? Uh, have you gone camping? Uh, just so I know your experience level, so you're not wasting your time answering those questions. You book your session, and then I, I promise after 55 minutes, you're, you're going to be 10 steps ahead of where you were before you started. So at the end of the night, I mean, punch your, your questions into the Facebook chat as we're talking here, guys, uh, and we'll do our best to answer them, you know, before the East Coasters turn into pumpkins. Um, but like Jeff said, it's, it's normal to, to want to ask all those questions. And honestly, like, it's great. If, you're, if you want to use your, your DNR and, and the resources available to you, great. If you want somebody, you want kind of a personal confidant, get it, you know, get your first session now while it's free. Uh, come with, come loaded with a bunch of questions and stuff that you're having trouble with. We'll do, I'll do my very best to answer them on the call. We'll work through it together. And then I'll send you on with more homework and, you know, maybe I'll talk to you in a week or two. Um, but you only get one freebie. So uh, the, the point of this is just, you know, usually when we're, um, when I find myself answering somebody's questions like this, they wind up at, they wind up with five or ten more. It's like, well, crap. Okay, we you know we answered that one thing, but now I have all this other stuff to work on. Well, welcome to the club, guys. Like this is an ongoing thing, um, and it's it's great to uh, to make mistakes and to bump deer, to have kind of failed hunts. As long as you're safe and legal about it, is all we want. And that's how we you know myself, Billy, and Danny have gotten to where we're at um uh, you know danny we haven't really gotten to you yet man do, do you have anything to add so far danny say something danny <laughs> uh nothing from the question standpoint i i was smiling when you were talking about calling a, a for us it would be a dec officer i googled um an area worth we're, we're planning on hunting um in a few few weeks and um just talk to the DEC officer. It's not, it's not scary. It's not hard. We've gotten great information from New York, from Colorado, from, from these wildlife officers and, and they, they're willing to help. And um, I, I thought that was a great point there. Um, if you ever have a question, just give the guy a call. Yeah. They, yeah. they'd rather have conversations with you about that stuff than uh, you know, what'd you do wrong, sir? You know, that's, and we're all, it's, it's law enforcement in a way. So we all kind of avoid that conversation, but you're so right, Danny. I mean, our successes that we've had in Colorado, a lot of that came from guidance from phone calls to the, you know, to the guys out there, the Rangers that were covering those areas. So, yeah. Right. So I, I that actually, it segues pretty nicely because we're talking about licenses and tags and you guys can see, let's just use what's on the screen here for a second. Um, so those are your, those are your management units in New yep. York, right? Yep. Okay. So in this, you're using the, uh, your version of the digest here. This is a PDF. Yeah. yeah this is just a PDF that you can get. Um, this is the, the doe management that they call it deer management permits here in New, in New York, but they're just essentially doe tags is what these are. Right. But this is awesome because this breakout visualizes very easily for you. It looks confusing at, at first, but I've seen so many maps that look like this, that I kind of already know how to read them. So let me explain what, what, and this is great that Billy pulled this up. So if you look like the, the color coding is telling you, like this is, this is a very common type of permit that you can get like last minute and you could probably get a bunch of them if you wanted them. Uh, and based on, right, the color, so decrease, no change, increase, you can see where deer are doing really well. So if you live in one of these areas or not too far from one of them, let's say you're in you know, I don't know, central New York, where it's like, okay, uh, decent, we can, you can probably, let's say, uh, 
silly, uh, what was 7M? I, I'm, I'm just picking one, 7M. Yeah. If you were to open a new tab, and once again, Google, uh, Doe Management Permits, New York, um, you know, DEC list, and try 7M, you know, like, and see what comes up. This is how we do research in the modern age. People had to physically, like, get booklets and make a call every time they wanted to figure this stuff out 20 years ago. So I know that this seems like a, a long and steep road, but if you can figure out these little tips and tricks, you can save yourself so much time. And by the way, go on way more hunts. Yeah. And where, where, okay, I applied for this tag. I didn't get it. Well, that doesn't mean your season's over. Or if you missed the draw, it just, you know, I mean, for me, eight out of 10 years, I'm pretty much just taking two and three year old does anyways. I'm, you know, the longer we've done it, the better we've gotten, at, especially with archery. And so now I'm at a point where I'm always on a lookout. I'm, I'm, you know, I might make a couple of moves on a big buck in a year if we have a couple of photos and I'll get, uh, you know, one or two encounters a year, but I still, I can't really call myself a trophy buck hunter. I've only taken two over 120 inches. The biggest buck I ever took was 144 inches. Um, really big body deer, really old deer. I was super proud, but like it was over before I knew it, mm -hmm. you know, he, ca he came in, shot him. He went 40 yards. I went, Holy cow, 30 mile an hour winds. I guess the, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to weather. Um, so you just never know. So giving yourself these opportunities, I mean, of course it starts with the tag. Hey, you know, so this is, tag, this is, I've been over here searching and this is where it gets, you know, challenging navigating any of this stuff and it, it does get frustrating any of these i've got a lot of experience with new york pennsylvania and colorado but they all their websites can be so plugged up there's just so many links so much information that it takes a little while to find it but so we are looking at these maps you know to show you you know what they've done this year as far as how many tags are issuing but they do have an actual table breakdown and uh and this is what you know, if you go into a store, if you're going to actually go to, let's say Cabela's or your local town hall or Walmart, they'll have a, they'll have all this information there typically taped to the table that you can look at that will tell you, you know, you were talking about 7M, I think was the area that you talked about, John. So 7M in the first round here, they're giving out, they're targeting to quota to give out 24,000 tags in that area. And the first choice is a high probability. The second choice is a medium probability. So if you're, if you're an individual that lives or hunts in 7M, your best opportunity to draw that tag is on your first choice. So you get two choices when you're drawing a tag for a, for a deer management permit, a DMP. And in New York, that's the only lottery that we have for tags. You know, you're going to get your regular season tag. You're going to get your archery muzzleloader tag. That's either sex for each. And then you have your opportunity to get your, up to four doe tags in the two separate draws. But, you know, it's very important to know what the probabilities are in your area because you can, uh, let's say, for example, on the 7M, let's say you decided to go with 7J on your first and 7M on your second. If you didn't get that 7M, then you, you didn't get your tag for that area for a doe permit. And there's a very good chance that based off of that, that they may not be doing a second a second draw with leftover tags come November 1st. So it's sort of stuff like that. And that's where it's dialogue. It's conversations like this, where each and every state, you know, that you got to find people, everybody has a strategy. My strategy might be totally different than someone else's, but it's having those conversations and looking into the numbers to see, you know, this is where I want to hunt this year. And what do I need to do to get the tags, additional tags, you know, we're not talking about bucks right now. We're talking about does, but I like shooting does just as much as I like shooting bucks because it fills the freezer and you can get, get them for different areas and uh, have an extra tag in your pocket. So, you know, it's a lot of good information out there, I guess is what it comes down to. And so, and then, and then we'll, I'll kind of tie a ribbon on that and then we'll get back to Jeff here. Cause what I wanted to point out is like, we've talked like we didn't really touch on archery, but, Oftentimes, and I know this is not just the case for Illinois, like I've, I've worked with people uh, and kind of had to figure out like, you know, Indiana, Ohio, um, like Missouri, 
a lot of the Midwest, it's going to be easier to get a tag or if not multiple tags, archery than it is with gun because more people hunt with guns. Now, the bummer with archery, of course, is that it just requires more practice. You, you got to get better not only at, at using the weapon, but at learning deer movement and a particular parcel of property. So there's, there's benefits and drawbacks to both. And th there, we actually have an entire lesson dedicated to this very early on um, in the Whitetail 101 course. But like basically that's, that's, your, that's your breakout is like, okay, deer permits with gun might be a little bit more challenging to get. You have a little bit less time typically, like the seasons tend to be a little shorter usually. Mm -hmm. Whereas with archery, you know, it gives you a little more flexibility because it is a more challenging endeavor. Um, however, crossbows are becoming legal for not just like 65 and up or handicap, which was kind of the, the entryway for that method of hunting. But for those of you guys who don't know, like there's just, you know, there's, a, there's been a, a significant decline in, in the number of overall hunters in this country with a couple of exceptions, you know, a couple of states have done okay by kind of staying level. So this is one of those ways that they're trying to make it more accessible and it's helped. And so that's, that's a good way to get into it is if you can get yourself a crossbow, it doesn't require a ton of practice. Once you get that thing tuned up yeah. and that scope dialed in, if you've got a rest, man, it, I mean, literally a day of practice. And I, I would be comfortable once somebody's, you know, put, hitting three inch groups at 30 yards, like take them out. So that's something to consider. Now that's uh, bill. Maybe you can um, like Google for me as well. Uh, just like, is crossbow hunting legal in blah? And I found one, uh, I actually did find one from 10 point, which is a crossbow manufacturer. Maybe I can send you the link, uh, that, that breaks this out on a map. And the reason I trust this one is because they do send you directly to state DNR or fish and wildlife websites. Um, there's a map I should be looking for here. Yeah, it's um, uh, I'll, maybe I'll just I'll just send it to you. I'm pretty sure I can find it. Um, like this right here, crossbow reg regulations. But um, so this is this is one that I actually refer back to because it, again, this changes. It's changing like every year. There's new legislation. Um, but if you can just find your state on that map, um, here I can. Uh, I'll just drop this in the chat for you because I already found it. Um. This oh, is one of those things, sure. you know, like th these are, these are the things that uh, the types of links that, that I'll leave in the Whitetail 101 series. So if you're curious, or let's say you move or you want to hunt out of state, well, there you go, you know, click on your state and blam. Uh, so, you know, I don't know, pick a state bill, Michigan, there you go. Anyone who's 10 years or older at, with a, with a firearm tag can use a crossbow, right? Um, and, and they'll give you the source, you know, you can click on the link and it'll bring you to where they found that information. So stuff like this I'll use because I, you know, they're, they're utilizing government websites. Yep. All right. We're at about, um, we're at about a half an hour. Why don't we kind of start turning the conversation over to like a little bit of kind of Q and A. And I know Jeff had some things that he wanted to ask and that might get us into a, some, some of that stuff. If that sounds good to you, John. Jeff, let's do it, man. What do you got for us? So, guys, uh, Jeff, Jeff is new to hunting. You haven't gone yet, right? No, is... no, I just got my yeah, I just got my tags, yeah. So, yeah, so to to be fair, we didn't really do the intro for anybody else, but uh, no. Billy, what I understand is he's kind of like your little protege this year, right? Yeah, he's my project, my pet, my yeah. pet project. <laughs> he's so, been he's been on my case for a long time to be his project. Yeah, yeah, I'm happier than a pig and shit right now, and it's. Yeah. I was saying to my wife tonight that. Jeff and I, you know, we were best friends growing up. I was his best man in his wedding. And like we live in, he lives in Rochester. I live in Buffalo now. We just don't see each other hardly at all. And uh, since he decided, I've been hounding him once, once it went on, once it went live for online uh, education. I'm like, dude, here's your chance. Like you don't even have to leave the house, you know, you're quarantined. And, uh, and here we are, like, we've been talking more right now in the last three weeks than yeah. we have in the last three years so yeah this is a perfect sure. example of how you know hunting in the outdoors can you know bring everybody together 
when you haven't had that common ground in a long time. So excited yeah, to sure. have you join in the brotherhood, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, ex I'm excited. And you know, like, uh, like Billy said earlier, like I'm, I'm a lifelong fisher. I grew up around all my friends hunted, like Billy, his brother, like all the kids at school hunted. I just never did. Um, it wasn't something my family did. My grandfather hunted a little bit. Um, but he would openly tell you he's not very good. So it's like, I never, I never went out with him. My, my parents didn't have the, the funds to kind of get me a bow, buy me guns. You know, they weren't into that stuff. And it's funny, you know, my mom shoots competition pistol, you know, you know, right now, which is completely different than she never hunt, you know, use guns or there weren't guns in the house. So everybody changes in pivots in their life. So, um, yeah, I was a big fly fisherman. Um, I got into that pretty heavily about, five years ago probably four or five years ago you know i tie flies i have multiple rods i go on fishing trips so again i told billy when i when i'm on to start doing this like i'm gonna hunt archery and i'm going all in like it's you know i need, i can pull a trigger and I, anytime i want if i want to go and just drop something i'll go pull a trigger but wait i gotta pause you there when you went archery. online and started yeah. all of this we we skipped a step here we just yeah, yeah. said everybody's done their hunter safety course yeah right so that's where you started right yeah 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 so i it was i went online and i'm at, i couldn't leave the house for work so i have two screens on my computer i had the hunter safety course on one screen and i was working on the other screen it was i did that one took me i probably did it over the course of a week and i took a week off and i started the bow hunter safety course right after that because we have two separate courses so um, i don't know if that's like that in every state but uh, again being new to it i wouldn't know that so yeah, did both of them. And Bill, just, maybe, you know, maybe it was like a 60 today. second aside. You could just pull up the the hunter safety, uh, uh, the hunter ed website. Super, so people know super where to find easy, that. super convenient. And like my buddy who was his first time hunting last year, my you know friend that lives across the street from me, he went and had to go forty five minutes away, two separate days, to sit in a classroom to get his hunter safety course. And I'm like, hell no! Like that was like that barrier to entry was like the ending point for me. Like I wasn't about to do that you know go and take two days away from my family to to sit and you know get a pass i'm like i'll just I have my lifetime fishing license i'll just fish the rest of my life so online made it you know broke that barrier down for me to just to get the tag there was no reason not to so and that's I, I want i learned something actually i think from bill i think from pert Near's podcast uh when you when you had that guy on he was saying like um maybe it wasn't him uh, but I learned this year and it, it, it hit me pff, like a ton of bricks right in the head. I was like, duh, because 36 out of 50 states in the union require you to complete a hunter safety course before you can legally purchase either your tags or your license, depending on the state. But you can't go hunting until you've done it. So you have to start that. You have to get that done. And that's a huge, huge advantage that you can do it online. But, huge advantage. But here's the thing. Not all states offer it online. You got to pay for it, right? That, that, that website, that hunter-ed.com, that's for profit. So where you used to be able to go pre-COVID to like a physical, you know, they do it at like a, uh, a church or something park district like that. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and you'd have to sign up for them. And right now, actually, it wouldn't matter. Even if we weren't in COVID, they'd all be full. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to get into one of those anyway. So you'd have to do it online. But the benefit right now is, A, more states are developing those courses with huntered.com it's a great course but the the other benefit is guys i i can't believe i didn't i, I felt so stupid that i didn't think of this before because i had been applying for points in colorado to hunt elk for two years already and i had gone through their um like in order to again same as illinois same as anywhere else in order to purchase anything with them you have to enter like a, a customer number right even though it was it was like okay the colorado or out of state you select out of state and then it says um like you have to entering. have your hunter ed number yeah the i exactly that's yeah. all it is and so and, and what type and i said you know uh firearm uh the number cool and then it'll bring you to the checkout page you can't get to that checkout page without that number but hello i wasn't i didn't need to complete a colorado one so of course it's it, there's reciprocity across all states so even if you live in let's say new york pennsylvania whatever state it is yeah, look up your state's course, but if there isn't one available, just pick a state yep. and do the course because you can still purchase a tag. That they'll just assume, yeah, you know, you, you were a non-resident or whatever. It's no different. So the courses that, now, if you can, if the course is available for your state, it's going to be better because there's going to be 
certain laws that you're going to be more up on. It's going to help you be more informed and more confident. But if it's not available, go the other way and then just bug the hell out of the DNR or uh, the EC officer. Right. So yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that's really, really important because people are going to get to the tags and license. And if they, if they haven't completed that step, they're going to go with the hell. So thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. If you were, so please continue. No, no, it's, no, it's a good point. So it's like, uh, you know, it's definitely a, a new process for me. And, you know, some, you know, some of my questions are like, there's going to be so many new people hunting, you know, if you don't have somebody, you've covered this on different resources, which is kind of good. You've answered my question. Like I have Billy, right? So it's like so many people out there that want to go out and hunt and, you know, there's a big push for, you know, you know, especially with things like meat eater and stuff like that, putting food on the table, you know, wild game and all that kind of stuff. People don't have the resources, you know, to, or mentors to kind of come up with. So I think, you know, from what I've heard from your program, but like, where do you find other resources or people to talk to or there groups out there other than the Facebook groups and, and things like that, that you could kind of touch on? I think Billy would agree. And I'm just going to, I'm going to tee this one up for him. I'm a member of three organizations and you can write these down. The first is Quality Deer Management Association, which is going to be soon changing its name, qdma.org, I think. Um, fantastic on research. We cite them, I would say 60% of all the links that I cite on regarding deer research go right to their website. Super worth it. And they have a lot stronger presence in the East than they do in the Midwest, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably even have a local chapter. And the more you can rub elbows with somebody in a group like that, that you're just going to learn through osmosis. And by the mm -hmm. way, like if you're nice, basically if you're just genuine, because everybody's going to know that you're new. So if right. you don't, if you're not full of shit and you're like, yeah, I'm pretty new, dude, there's a lot of people like me and Bill in the real world that would just chomp at the pit. I've been invited on hunts. I went on my first um, duck and goose hunt a couple of years ago. And I was like, damn, I, I got to get more into this. I'm actually getting, my wife and I are, are getting a lab this week. Nice. Uh, so I'm on the, nice. yeah, now I'm on the prowl. Cause I've seen that, you right. know, between, between the duck hunting, and the pheasant hunting that I was able to do through the set that brings up the second organization is pheasants forever. And while it's not necessarily deer geared, um, I had a local chapter that was very active, did a lot of shoots and stuff like that and banquets and um, and a, a couple of hunts every year and had a heavy focus on recruiting women and youth that were motivated to hunt. So I liked that. I wound up helping people, uh, you know, like 12 to 18 year old kids shoot shotguns for the first time and stuff. Really rewarding. Yes. But all those guys hunt deer. Mm -hmm. And then the third um, is BHA. And that's, I know yeah. Bill is actually even more involved than I am with BHA. And I love what they're doing right now. I, I'm learning how to hunt for, chanterelles and porcinis and stuff through their they're doing workshops just like this for their members so you know they're they're making do even though we can't get together physically right now they're they're giving me so much more than the 35 bucks a year than i pay them right that's that's three that i like just based on my experience bill what do you think yeah i, I mean i would agree with those organizations as far as you know some nonprofits, some organizations that you can belong to to kind of become, you know, get into a group of people, you know, NWTF is another one here in New York. NWTF is incredible, you know, very active. The COVID crushed them because the banquets are a huge part of how they interact and how they do their fundraising. So they've been impacted, but you know, you and I talk a lot, Jeff, about podcasts and I've plugged you into yeah. a handful of different podcasts. There's some great resources out there. There's, there are some that are very heavily monetized and, you know, there's value in the information you get from them, but you also have to understand that they're, you know, it's, it's monetized. So, right. you know, you, you want it like, that's one of the things we're trying to do with our platform is that, you know, at this point we're not working with anybody in particular. So we're just trying to bring you honest information. Um, but yeah, I think organizations, local sportsmen's clubs. So like, you know, we have Rochester Brooks, you know, getting involved with somebody like that in the Honey Falls area, you know, there's a lot of people there. You just kind of networking um, and building that out. But yeah, it's, it's very challenging. And there are those Facebook groups out there, but um, yeah, that can become a dumpster fire real quick. And, you know, I'm a member of a lot of them and there's just so much information in there. I can't, I can't keep up with it all, you know? So it's just, you got to find those key right, that people that you trust and 
hug hug them and get as much information from them as possible. Right. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, if I didn't have you guys, I probably would never have, you know, would never have done it, taken that leap. You know, I didn't have resources like, okay, I got my, you know, like you said earlier, is just like, okay, I finished my hunter certificate, you know, safety course. Now what? No, yeah, now what do I do? Right. And I actually said that. I'm like, okay, now what? Like, I'll figure out when I want to go get a bow or I'll talk to Billy. Like, if I didn't have Billy to talk to, like, literally, I'm just going to be like, okay, I'm just going to have this hunter safety course forever until I, you know, figure out what I want to do, you know, and really get into it. So I think there's a lot of people that are like that. And it's just, it's a little intimidating. Um, again, I'm in the fly fishing world. Like that's intimidating. Also, like people are afraid to fly fish. They think it's kind of a little bit uppity or really intricate and in what it's doing. It's, you know, with a couple of good resources, like anything else, you, it's pretty simple to do. And you, you know, plenty of, like you said, online platforms or YouTube channels and stuff. So it all, you just got to dive into it head first and gain as much knowledge before you even start asking questions. You know, I went and got a bow off of, you know, I listened to Billy's Heritage Out, um, Outdoors um, podcast. You know, I went the next week and, you know, bought a bow, you know, just again, went all in. But if I didn't have the pre-information to even go there and have the right knowledge of questions to ask, I would have been completely lost. And I still walked in there. Like I talked to the, the, um, the, the owner, Lewis, I'm like, dude, start from scratch. Like, I have no idea. Like, let's just start from the basics. You know, one-on-one, I, I have no idea. So you gotta, you gotta be humbled in doing that, I guess, if, if in order to learn. So. Yeah. I was gonna, I forgot to mention too, your local, you know, we've been doing archery shops, you know, locally, Th those folks, there's some salt of the earth people in those places that they want nothing more than to help people get in, involved in the outdoors. So, you know, that's a great, area to just start hanging around because those those shops are they're a place where you can you can build some lifelong friends for sure and yeah and archery course. ranges and gun ranges in general too you know i mean those are places where hunters are going to congregate and that's what we're getting at like you can you can pay your way into some of that with a you know a gun club or some of the organizations that we're talking about um or you could just go to a range and shoot and see who you meet. You got to shoot your bow. I mean, you know, some of us are probably fortunate that we can just pick up a block target, you know, from Cabela's or whatever and go to the backyard. It's free. Mm -hmm. um, but there is something to be said, especially in the first couple of years of just being in places where people who know more than you do are, Yep. <laughs> you know, you just talk to guys uh, and you, you, you know, again, you piecemeal it together. There's going to be stuff. I pick up stuff every year, man. I don't know it all, but I know enough to go out even on a, you know, whether it's public or private parcel of land. And if I spend enough sits, I am going to take a deer. I, it might not be the biggest deer, but I'm going to find, I'm going to find enough and figure out where the people are moving and where they're not. Mm -hmm. And maybe kind of a weird way to, you know, get in, whether I got to wear my muck boots across a, a you know, a cold ditch or something to get back in there where I'm pretty sure there's deer spending time. But Jeff asked, he said, uh, like, where do you go from, you know, from your, your hunter safety course? Like, where do I go from here? Well, that was the, <laughs> the answer is, is in the curriculum. In my mind, it's figure out a suitable place to hunt. Um, and so that's like, you can scroll down the uh, curriculum. You click that little, um, that little arrow there. Like, it takes you kind of through all of that uh, range safety and etiquette. So you, that's, that's the kind of stuff like, you know, the first time I ever walked on a gun range, I think it was 15 and I broke the rules. I got yelled at. And for good reason, you know, I turned around with, a, even though the gun was no longer loaded, I turned around with a gun on the line and people, people don't know, you know, at 15 years old, I almost got kicked out and I felt bad, but I was like, you know, in hindsight, no, this is good that this is the way these guys are handling themselves. I learned that at 15. Thankfully, nobody got shot, right? Like I said, right. the gun wasn't loaded, but I was like, oh, and all scared. So <laughs> it doesn't feel any better at 33 than it does at 15 to have that happen to you. That's why, you know, I, like I created a curriculum for people to go, oh, I'm really glad that I got an opportunity to learn that before I made an ass of myself. Some of those common things to expect you know, to, to just have a positive experience. But I, I want to get on to, uh, I want to just spend five minutes on kind of some tactics for um, establishing a place to hunt. Because I think we're kind of taken for granted a little bit that people are going to be hunting public land. But I would submit actually that if you're willing, if you think of all the, the gear 
it, like, what, what are our two most limited resources? Time, money. That's all of us, man. All right. And like you, so if you have a little bit more money to throw at the problem right now, I would strongly recommend checking out like, um, maybe you can pull up hunting lease network. Um, base camp leasing is another one. And then there's a new newer one. Um, and the guy seems like a really good guy. Uh, guy Nick uh, founded one called Land Trust, and he kind of built that more like Airbnb for for hunting leases. So, the first one is probably the most popular and the the most uh, well known, HLN. And that one, I mean, it's a, it's pretty simple, man. Click on a state, you know, you can you can kind of search by the number in your party the uh the price range you're willing to pay that kind of stuff and i think they have a review function on there too so you can you can kind of get an, an idea of what the property is going to um offer you and this is paid now you're 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 gonna you're gonna pay the the landowner for rights to to go and, and trespass on their land uh and keep in mind guys that um I mean, I, I've known guys to, to take out leases that might have only been $800 or $1,000, and they can split that between a few people. Now, is the quality of deer hunting going to be quite as high on a parcel of property like that? Probably not. But if it's got, you know, if it's got some positive reviews from years past that people have gone, gone out and seen deer, well, I mean, you know, you, you, in a lot of cases, you get what you pay for. Uh, but you don't have to pay a ton is, is what I'm getting at. And if you'll indulge me for a second, like I'm all about the whole public land hunting ethos. I'm going to be hunting. That's why I'm out in Colorado at the moment is because I'm going to be hunting hundred percent public land for elk this year and then come back home and do, um, and do whitetail with the family. But I've had time out here to scout. I've used my Onyx or at the, um, that Billy has pulled up. This is a really, really invaluable resource. I think he, they they still doing like a seven or a fourteen day trial of this. I'm not sure if they are right now, but they they do. There's promos uh, out there all the time. They are they are. I just checked the website yesterday. There you go. So you can try this for fourteen days and then punch in, you know, I don't know, Randy or something for Randy Newberg. You get like twenty percent off, uh, and then Randy Newberg will probably get a dollar or something. But uh, it's worth. It's been worth every penny. If you're gonna hunt public land. Yeah, Onyx is almost certainly worth it for you um, because you're going to be able to figure out where the access points are more easily. You'll be able to, there's all these layers on there. However, remember, all this stuff takes time, right? And you can only scout so much from your couch. Again, there is a, there is a, a video and a lesson in Whitetail 101 on how to help you do that. But regardless, I mean, this year, just on elk here in Colorado, I mean, it's a big state. There's like 70 something units. And just before I, I even applied for my tags, I was trying to, you know, do some research online, pick out some spots based on what I'd seen personally. So you spend all that time. I mean, I've probably spent a combined 30 or 40 hours just on the computer scouting these locations before I went out and then found a bunch of the places where I couldn't get in. There was a locked fence. There was something I didn't, un, I didn't know about. Uh, and, and then places that I physically went and walked and, check them off the list. Nope. I don't like this area. I don't like this area. It's a process of elimination. So I've probably got, you know, treating it like a full-time job, probably a hundred plus hours into this. Now, conversely, what is your time worth to you? Right. Because if you want to have, you know, I mean, you're going to have to have some kind of blind or stand, um, you know, climbing stand is, is, is a common one for public land. There's going to be a certain amount of gear that you have to go out and yeah, you got to spend money on that. Again, that's more time. Whereas you go on Basecamp, HLN, um, Land Trust, and you find a spot where maybe you can get in on, um, on a lease or a hunting club or something where somebody's looking for one extra guy to pay three or 400 bucks, you know, and you get four, five, six, seven, eight days to be able to hunt that spot. You know, it might be more that, that might be worth it to you because now you can skip forward a whole bunch of steps. If we're talking about, you know, we're, crunch time is, is occurring. 
I know a lot of seasons don't start until like, you know, some are late September, a lot are like early to mid October. And then if you're gun hunting, it might even be later than that, but you're running out of time. Yep. You know, so you, you just gotta, I, I guess my, my recommendation for anybody, you know, thinking about that, like in their head, like, okay, do I have the money? What, what is my, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars or more, depending on the, um, the level of hunting that you, you want or, or are able to pay for worth this year. And if that place has a couple stands on it, you could ask the landowner where the deer are moving, have a really good chance at, at getting on some and get, you know, get on the board. It's like a baseball billy, right? Like the, the first, the first run is usually the hardest. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you want to have that experience, if your goal is to have, have the, the highest likelihood of success, I would say that actually paying for a lease or, or trying to join a club in your first year or two is not a bad move. And you're actually probably going to be less invested than you would have been getting all that additional gear. And then of course, all the additional time. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree for sure. And uh, I, I mean, go ahead. Oh, sorry, no, go ahead. No, no, you go. Well, that's what it's going to be like. One of my other questions is like, that, that's where I'm at right now is like, okay, what do I need? And I keep texting Billy bills. Like I have that. You don't need it. You, I have that. You don't need it. Like if someone's out there doesn't have a Billy, I kind of like that idea of, you know, that, that lease trust where they already, you know, or that land trust where they already have might have stuff set up or you can join another group or again, you know, make it easier, limit the barrier barriers to entry for you to get out there and actually do the hunting you need to do, you know, cause I'm like, okay, do I need to, do I need a stand or do, can I use one of Billy's stands? Like, what do I do next? Like, okay, I made a purchase on a bow, right? I, again, I probably spending more than a lot of people, you know, would, or maybe not, but like, again, something I talked through with Billy is like, okay, I'm a, I'm a buy once cry once kind of person. Do I just get this stuff now and, and go through it? But there's probably things that I'm getting that I probably don't need right away. And just, you know, I like this as an option. This, you know, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It feels, it feels like more upfront. Cause you're like, well, I'm, I, like I get it, you know? And, and I actually, I've never paid for a lease in my life, but I, you know, I grew up in a hunting family. We were lucky to have people yeah. all throughout our lives that would allow us to hunt their land. And then when my brother and I got into bow hunting, it was specifically because we had some parcels of land not too, too far from the Chicago area that we could go out to and check out. And it's like, well, let's go stretch our legs. Let's see if we can figure out a new spot. And the answer was, yes, it just took a hell of a lot more time um, because you'd see deer a couple hundred yards out and they knew they're privy, man, especially the older ones. And that's, that's something to consider as well. You know, it's like I'll, in your first couple of years, just set realistic expectations because they behave right. differently. I'll throw it out there too. If you're new to, if you're new into hunting, like somebody like you, Jeff, you know, you have a whole network of people that you know, that I don't know, that Danny doesn't know that if you put it out there that, Hey, I'm, I just got my hunting license. You have no idea who might say, Hey, Jeff, you know, I trust you. I know you, you're a good guy. You can come hunt the 15 acres behind my house. So a lot of times you may not even need to pay for that access. People just knowing who you are and now you're into it and they trust you as a person. So don't hesitate. If you're a new hunter out there, I've seen it in the last few days quite a bit on Facebook in some of these different hunting groups, people just throwing it out there and saying, hey, I'm new to hunting in this area. Does anybody have any property I can use? And the amount of replies, people saying, yeah, direct message me. I'm quite amazed. So I would definitely encourage people to, you know, put it out there that you're that you're going to hunt this year because you have no idea what opportunity might be around the corner. Own it yeah. and don't be afraid to broadcast it. Right, exactly. So as far as as far as equipment, Jonesy, I was thinking <laughs> about that question that you asked. And uh there's like four things that I wrote down that are if you if you needed to go out and hunt tomorrow that you need to have. That's a weapon. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you're gonna hunt archery, that's awesome. But there's a lot of people you might just be looking to get into hunting with a firearm. So you could, you could use anything from your grandpa's 30, 30 lever action to a, a 12 gauge, 20 gauge, whatever you can get your hands on as a legal weapon. You need a knife to field dress. You need a flashlight. So if you're out there in the dark, you can find your way home and you need some paper towel for either nature calling number two or just cleaning up 
after whatever you got to do when you kill that deer. Like you, you really do not don't want to be lot. asking the question of what type of leaf you're using, Mm-mm, sir. <laughs> no, we well call them deer after you're done hunting. Yeah, we call them shit tickets, and you do not yeah. go in the woods without your shit tickets, sir. So I think meat eater guys call it camp cash. I really like that. Camp cash, yeah, you can trade that stuff. But that's, I mean, it is so. It's at the end of the day, you can go out in blue jeans and a hoodie, and you can kill a deer. You know, it, there's a lot to it. Like we all get so tied up in all this gear and equipment, and I love it. It's what I'm all about. I love gear, but do I you really need it? No, you don't have to have all that stuff. So, you know, you've got a lot of technical fishing apparel. A lot of that stuff will cross over so well. You were telling me the different stuff you have. You know, you might want to buy a couple pieces, like exterior pieces that are camouflage and maybe a little bit quieter but you have a lot of what you need already you don't need to go out and dump you know a thousand dollars even five hundred dollars on clothing and gear of that sort right i do fish in the middle of winter so like from you know you guys are all hunting and i used to love as soon as shotgun season opened (laughs) you guys it was great because all the water's cleared out steelhead and browns are running it's a great time frame, you know, all the new dummy hunters are off the water, but now I'm one of those dummy hunters. So, no, you're one so, of them. Yeah. so one, yeah. you're already like 80% of the way there. Yeah. I'm already, yeah. You need yeah. like camouflage boots, man. Just don't wear blue boots and you're good. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, don't wear a color that that's going to stick out to the deer. And aside from that, if you're comfortable, like if you're now, that's the thing is that like, I, you know, I don't know how active you are, how actively you fish if you're moving very much. He's a but running that, that fisherman. That could be the challenge. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty, I like to move. I'm a, I'm well, a I mean, you know, ice, chaser, ice so. fishing is a little bit different. Yeah, hell like no. It. I don't uh, ice fish. That's too cold for me. Hell no. So, but you have to keep that in mind. That's something, you yeah. know, like you yeah, may absolutely. think that you're, you're prepared to, to hang out in 30, you know, in 30 degree weather, but sit on a, a, a steel yeah. platform for four or five hours and that might change your mind. So yeah. I would say yeah, like sure. commonly my that's feet, kind of the things I'm concerned about. Yeah, my yeah, feet, feet get cold. So good boots, don't double up on socks, uh sock liners as as opposed to a second pair of socks, because <laughs> it, that's another one I was like, oh yeah, I'm stupid. Um if you're constricting your foot, like you, you get a boot that fits and then you got a maximum of you know a couple extra millimeters of like an insulated sock. If you double those things up, you're just constricting your foot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of where I am right now. I was literally talking to Billy about this today. It's like, I'm getting new wading boots, you know, cause I stand in, you know, 36 degree water for hours on end, your ice, your feet turn into blocks. And that's kind of what I'm dealing with is how to, the, the sock management piece of keeping your feet semi warm, even with, you know, packing warmers in there and stuff like that still sucks. You know, that's yeah. the yeah, worst I, part of it. So. I would say though, like, you know, like I haven't gotten too, too crazy. I, I shoot an 18 year old Hoyt bow. Um, that I got mm-hmm. used from somebody that I trusted at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I bought it when it was 14 years old, you know, I haven't broken it yet. Still kills deer. Right. John, your um, wife, your wife is trying to join right now. Should I let her in <laughs> <laughs> this chat? Yes. She's oh, in the man. waiting room. <laughs> Please let her in. I'm oh, scared. God. I'm afraid. I'm afraid what she'll say. I, I think she probably means to join like as a get like a, with the Facebook thing. Oh, nah, no. we're, she's coming this is a wild card let her in what does no, she got no. <laughs> all right uh well cam- <laughs> official cameraman of whitetail 101 he'll say <laughs> god um we we should probably start uh dan do, do we have any questions uh like from the chat we should probably start wrapping this up so you guys don't go too I don't late. think there was anything immediate um there was a little mention from Chris Hojo about lifetime licenses that we could hit on quick. Um, I know in New York, if you do decide that you are dedicated to the sport and you want to want to hunt for the rest of your life, a lifetime license is a really cheap way to um, get your tags every year. Um, I don't know if either of you guys want to add anything to the lifetime yeah. license topic. I'll add to that, you know, especially as a, a new father, um, if you foresee your kids even just being involved in fishing um, and just being outdoors and buying a license, uh, a lifetime license is a great investment with a young child. Um, in New York, you can buy the license. Uh, I think it's before 12 years old and it's like super cheap, like under $400. And uh, I think even now, like, what was your license for you, Jeff? How much did your altogether did you spend? I, with a, a couple dollar donation, I spent $47 today for my uh, regular season and uh, my bow tags and okay. 
uh, two sets. I got one, two lotteries of uh, um, dough tags. Okay. So, I mean, so, I think for an, for an adult. I think it was 22. I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that for a regular season, my regular season tag or something like that. Yeah. Nothing. So, for an adult, I think you'd be upwards of like 800 bucks for, for a sportsman yeah. lifeman, lifetime. But if you figured out the years that you're probably going to hunt, you know, you would far surpass that. And it's just one last thing you got to worry about. Yeah, Those tags I show purchased, up in the mail. And, yeah. I purchased my lifetime fishing license at 18 years old for 300 and some bucks. And I wish I could just then buy the other half and just you know, roll it into the sportsman. But I don't think you can do that. So you can, you can add to it. I don't, it wouldn't, I don't think it, I don't think you could do it from the fishing angle, but I know right. like I had a sportsman and I tacked a, an archery and muzzleloader on this yeah. year for like 400 right. total. So I yeah. think you can get the, I think I was, look, I was looking at today. I think you can get the kids ones from like age between age five and 11 is even a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. So like as soon as I can buy Bo, you know, his sportsman's license, I'm, I'm doing it, whether he uses it or not. Cause it's stupid cheap. You do it right now. You, yeah. You can do it from zero, from one. Oh, one zero to five. Yeah. You, just oh, need really? a, you just need a birth certificate number. Yeah. Done. Done. That's even crazy cheap. That's nuts. Talk about money well spent. You just got to force them to be in the sport, though. That's all. So that's actually what I was getting at is, like, I would rather spend money on going on hunts than, like, you know, I mean, like, I try to get, like, one or two nice pieces of gear a year so that I'm more comfortable. I mean, that it, it does – there's no taking away from the fact that, like, if you're more comfortable, you're going to stay out there longer. And the longer you're – you know, the longer you can stay, the more the magic happens. Yeah. No question. Um, but – to start, man, like one one layer of camo and just just layer everything underneath that. Yeah. Do Bye. not hesitate to use stuff you have laying around the house. Um, like I have a set of Carhartt bibs in super cold weather. Those are great. I have like a a brown American Eagle fleece quarter zip that I still use hunting from like high school. It's like ten years old. Just like any sort of layering equipment like you don't need to buy camo as long as it's some sort of like earthy tone whatever it doesn't even need to be earthy tone just something to keep you warm and comfortable and get behind a tree or get up in a tree yeah and and put something you know if it's a little bit looser fitting you, you pull a, a break a breakup pattern on over it you know again going back to like even Walmart or, you know, one of the big box kind of outdoor goods stores, you can usually find a cheap pair of pants and a shirt for literally 10 and $20 respectively. Um, so if you see the, the commercials for, you know, Sitka and all that stuff, I'm not saying it's not worth it. That is really nice stuff, but we're talking about like, now you're talking about $250 an article and that's designed to layer. So three layers at $250 a piece times two. You're talking fifteen hundred dollars to be fully outfitted and ready for like, you know, to to sit in the stand. Whereas, really, what that stuff's designed to do is to help wick moisture away on a more active hunt, which most people for whitetails are not really going that active, especially as a beginner. I mean, you guys have the benefit of like hills and you know, kind of mountains where you can maybe try and do like a spot and stalk style. Most people aren't still doing that though. You're either tree stand hunting or you're hunting out of a blind. And if you're going to do a blind, you can, uh, but I wouldn't just like throw a pop-up out in a field or, you know, next to a, a game path that you've found, you know, you found some good deer tracks. Great. But they're going to take one look at that blind just because it's camo doesn't mean they're not going, what's the heck? <laughs> so you got to, you got to pay attention to stuff like that, you know, so you would actually be better off, um, there's actually, there's, there's one called a ghost blind just real quick while we're on the subject. Um, the mirror one. Yeah. yeah. I've used it, man. Um, it's Does awesome. It yeah. If you can set it up, it doesn't work real well when it's windy. Uh, cause it, you know, it can <laughs> kind of flop over. Um, but on a calm day and if you can, um, like if it's in the morning, you, you want the sun to your back cause that, you know, a thing might catch a glint. Um, but that thing's pretty cool. Uh, or if, again, that's another benefit to hunting on um, like a private lease or private, you know, private land with permission is that you might not necessarily need that thing. They might already have blinds or you, you can, you know, put a pop-up blind out there a week or two before you're actually going to hunt. The deer will get used to it. Once your scent's off of it and they know it's not a threat, 
if you can get into that thing without them knowing, you're yeah. golden, man. They'll walk right by it. And that's so the reason I brought that up is because we were talking about breakup. If you're going to hunt from inside of a blind, you can just wear all black and wear, right. you know, put some black face paint on. Um, let's and not the, go. The top of your head, John. You have to cover yeah, that. For me, again, yeah. I shun. Um, <laughs> yeah, just don't let too much light into the blind and you're good to go. Um, now you got something, you know, that's just as easy as like a tree stand because you don't have to set it up every time. And that's really, in my experience, I had one time where like the, uh, my, a buddy of mine uh, had gained access, permission to hunt like a new property that was much closer to home for us. Guy was super nice. I couldn't believe he was just letting us hunt there. He's like, yeah, sure. Um, and I backed my way into it because our hunting buddy, we'd, we'd brought down to hunt with us in Southern Illinois. So I went over there and it was after like really, really strong winds. And it took, it picked up the blind and threw it. He had staked down and it had been there for like 10 days or something. He had hunted out of it once and the deer were getting used to it. And he's like, yeah, it'll be good. I go out there the day after really strong winds and it's like, well, it almost went in the Creek. So I had to pull it back up and then take a guess at where it was. And I was wrong. And a doe and her fawn came out literally like three yards from the blind. And so I like, I, I actually had the screen up, so I know she couldn't see in, right? I was, I was planning on shooting forward this way, and she came from my right. And I turned, and I looked through the screen, and she just looked at the blind like, what the hell? And she was gone out of there, man. So it, um, it just got, that stuff like that happens, like, all the time, even in the experience center. Right. But, um, yeah, if, if that blind had been exactly where it was, apparently it was supposed to be, like, 25 yards to the south on that same tree line then i would have had a perfect shot as she was coming out to that that field you know so they they will get used to it but just make sure that you you don't let too much light in the blind and that you're really dark because the inside of those are black what about like scent covering stuff i think mean, that's always things that you kind of hear about blocking your scent and you know wind control and stuff like that i always do so it. that's something new hunters need to worry about yeah focus on the wind is my first my belief I, on that because yeah, you, they're gonna smell you, irregardless. I mean, I said irregardless. God damn it! <laughs> you, yeah. It's not a word, though. It's not, it's a, not word. a word. Regardless of what you do, there's a there lot you, you can you can spray all kinds of cover spray, um, scent killer, wash your clothes. But at the end of the day, you've got organic matter that's coming off you and making smell from the step out of you. I'm a pretty greasy guy, so yeah. I, you know. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah, and so. <laughs> Yeah, you I would can say that your clothes and all your gear, but you're still yeah. using it. Um, yeah. I, I, I use that, that deodorant and stuff. It, it'll, it may help you, but if you think about like a, using a scent lure or something, which I, again, I will do, you got, you got to think about it from the perspective of like, where do you anticipate the deer coming from? Which direction? And, and where might they be going to? And that's always an educated guess because there may have been something that bumped them off their pattern the neighbor might be mowing or you know whatever they might be working out in the field there may have been a predator it might have been, been another hunter come through it might have just been if you're on public land it might have just been some guy walking his dog yeah you know and that can affect when and where they're moving and all of a sudden here comes that big eight coming from the field at 9 a.m and you're like why you're coming the complete wrong way so there i mean it, it's guesswork and there you know there's more modules on this in the um in the program and we can talk about that on like a you hunt session but the fact is like probably what no matter what you do at least 51 percent of the time you're gonna be wrong um right. but all, you still need a strategy so you take an educated guess and you do your best now the the concept with wind the reason i like to um i got one of those scent crushers it's, it works man it works real well um and then i spray like a there's just like a cover scent over me as I'm going out. Uh, and I try not to get sweated up. So I'm not stinking up because I've actually seen a deer cut my path that I took into the woods smell like literally at the point where I turned in, he was walking right down the road and he was going to cross and he smelled it, looked in my direction, turned the other way and kind of like half flagged his tail. And I was like, no shit. So, it, I mean, it goes to show even spraying the bottoms of your boots, you know, is worth, is worth the time. But you have to consider, like, 
a more mature deer is more likely to, to smell that and go, hmm, probably not worth it, you know, and, and go the other way or go around. I can't tell you the number of times that I've been hunting like a, like a stand that's, that's been in the same place, the same tree for years. And multiple times I have come out like during snow. So there's no question I would, I would have seen the track if it was there when I went in during snow or right after rain. And I see large tracks, like 100, 150 yards from where I was hunting. Never saw the deer. So they're smart, man. They, they'll, they'll figure you yeah. out. And usually if they've got a place where they want to go to, they're going to, they're going to take a tack where they, they're staying concealed the entire time until they have an opportunity to, to kind of scent out the area and go, okay, it, everything's good. So playing wind is a tricky one with like, with mature deer, it's not so bad with deer in general, because especially in like the early season where they're mostly grouped up in bachelors, you know, a lot of the, the bucks will be together still. A lot of the does and the fawns will still be together and they'll kind of be feeding in groups and there's relative security there. The challenge is there's more eyes and ears on everything, but if that lead doe is taking them through and she, you know, she doesn't notice anything, take your pick is usually the case. So that early season, since you're, you're archery hunting, Jeff, you know, I would encourage you to get out there and just spend some time wherever you're going to be hunting. Because even if you blow them out in a couple days, like they're going to be right back. And now you've learned something. Mm -hmm. but don't, I, I guess that's probably a good place to close is like, we're going to, I'm, I'm, I definitely want to do more of these and I hope we can get people, you know, kind of signed on live so we can get more questions. Um, I really appreciate your questions, Jeff, but like the, what I want to close on is like, if you're getting busted by deer, dude, you're in the game. Don't get right. down. Don't get upset. We just want you to be safe. We don't want you breaking laws or getting in trouble from that perspective. You know, and I guess we, actually where should we should close is uh, Whitetail 101 and none of its affiliates are in any way, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, employees of any government organization or attorneys do not take any legal advice. You know, we, we're trying to refer you guys to, to places where you can find this information on your own resource and, and how to, yeah, how to, how to utilize those resources. I always got to direct you straight to the, to the source, man. Um, but with that, if you're, if you're staying safe and you're not, you're not taking any chances with your you know, health or, or safety or the safety of anybody else or their property, you're doing it right. You know, you might piss off a couple of people. We'll, we'll talk in a future podcast about, you know, etiquette of public land hunting and stuff and, you know, what to do if you see a, a red flashing light kind of thing or somebody whistling at you. That means get the hell out of my woods. <laughs> Somebody's hunting here. Yeah. Um, but that all comes right back to what we were talking about. There's, it, it, it is a little bit, we're just trying to find ways to lower the pathway to entry for new guys. Or, or folks who have maybe gone out a couple times in the last year or two and not had success or had negative experiences. This is, you know, these are all just tips and tricks to, that we want to open you up to because yeah, it, it seems like upfront public land hunting is more accessible in some regards it is, but the, the more I learn, the more I realize it's, it's probably worth doing a little bit of research up front and getting yourself in the ball game because you're going to be able to spend more time around people who know what they're doing and are, are on your side, especially if you're paying right. them. Now they've got skin in the game to make sure that you have success. Right. No, it's absolutely true. I appreciate your insight on it. And, you know, this was, this was good for me and I'm sure good for other people. And, you know, I know a lot of people that listen to this podcast is, you know, are experienced hunters and, you know, but I hope there's some people that are new like myself listening tonight. So yeah. it was good. Any other questions that popped up, Danny? Um, Danny's just been drinking his tall boy back there yeah. silently. I dipped into my uh, my homemade wine tonight, so it's nice. It's, it's been treating me pretty well. Yeah, Billy, you were brewing beer. Now you're Danny. You're making wine. And Danny makes oh. it with his feet. Stomp <laughs> it down. <laughs> the warning to anybody style. that ever tries it. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Harvey was actually saying that uh, getting doe tags is pretty easy. Um, I think what he's implying is that he could uh, sign some over to you, Jeff, because he's not going to be shooting many deer this year. <laughs> um, that was one thing. Oh, um, 
I kind of wanted to emphasize like forums and YouTube. Like I was just on YouTube the other day watching the hunting public and they had like a gear dump and I was dying because they had old army fatigue closed and yeah. ripped jeans and stuff. And these guys are like some of the best hunters in the country. Um, right. It, for a beginner, it might be intimidating, but like once you get some of the little stuff down, YouTube is just is a great resource too. Yeah, I'm a just, big I'm a big you know. YouTuber, so I, Billy turned me on to the Honey Public kit, Cats, and I I really like those guys. And yeah, you're right, they're wearing army fatigues and stuff. They get at like Salvation Army or Goodwill and just rolling, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I like gear. I'm like Billy. I like gear. I like to spend my money. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got to keep that economy going, boys. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Anything else, Bill? No, I think I think that was a, a fun conversation. I hope we weren't uh, too wide and too shallow on things, but you know we're trying to keep it somewhat short and digestible. So, you know, we're all a resource here, and you know John's put together a great program. So I encourage everybody to go over and check his stuff out at Sportsman One Hundred and One and um, his social channels with Instagram and Facebook, and you know give him a shot. Check out his program. I think you you won't be upset with what you find there, and uh, there's not many resources out there like that like what he's created so you know hats off to you and all of us you know the three of us that are here that have been hunting for a long time we all just are trying so hard to reach new people and john and i have talked about this till we're blue in the face that we're just in an echo chamber and you keep talking to the, everybody we all love to hunt it's great like we're just talking yeah. to each other but you know reaching someone new like you jeff you're in my life circle but you haven't gotten into this circle yet so you know it's a challenge to everybody you know, including yourself, Jeff, that, you know, you, you've got, um, Ronnie, Ron, who's right, yeah. getting into hunting, like everybody yeah. who's listening to this, everybody who's taking part in it, try to reach out and, and inform one person about this program or about our podcast or about getting involved in the outdoors, because it's just, that will just grow everything exponentially. So I guess that's my closing is, uh, you know, put your arm out and try to help somebody. And uh, we're all in this thing trying to get more people in the outdoors and live in this lifestyle. So can, can I make one last ask? Slash no, it's my show. No, no. plug. No. Okay. <laughs> Good night, everybody <laughs> live from New York. It's Saturday night. Um, no, uh, I don't anybody... think you can say that. I think that's copyrighted. I think yeah. we just got really get shut oh, down. No. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think we're right monetizing there. this one. Okay, good. Um, for anybody who, you know, who, who listens to this, you know, live or later, uh, if you get something from this, share it with, with friends who you think might be interested, ask them, Hey, would you, you know, I'm going to go hunting. I'm going to try and go hunting this year. You want to, you know, walk around in the woods with me and think a bunch of squirrels or deer, which happens to all of us, by the way. Yeah. Um, if you get something from this, th we were hoping this conversation would be a springboard for somebody who sa keeps saying maybe next year, and then, you know, you just, you get behind the eight ball and you're like, damn it, I did it again. I, I you know, I missed the ball. I missed the boat. Um, no, not necessarily. You still got some time. You just got to, you got to get a move on. So utilize this, uh, start where we suggest it. Cause you can, guys, it's not a waste of money to buy a, a hunting license. That money goes to a very good place. It helps us to, to protect the resource in the first place. Um, so even if you do, you only go that far, you've actually contributed to the system you have you could technically call yourself a conservationist you have given money to a conservation cause um that's that's what motivated me to start this in the first place but i, I mean it's so much more than that you see but the the times that that billy and danny and jeff are going to spend together over the next couple months um you know bitching and moaning about how cold it was out there but man when that you know when, when that when that wide 10 came through finally oh that was awesome you know oh yeah, i had a group of those come it, i just i love that experience that's what kept me in the game for so long when i was young was just time with my dad and my brother and then as i started kind of asking those questions of why i was doing it it was like yeah it's this and it's also like look at all that we're that that we're uh, contributing to and mm -hmm. it just it's like a rabbit hole man you go down you just you never stop learning so don't be afraid to fail uh, don't be afraid to ask questions to folks like me, Billy, Danny, and Jeff, once he knows what the hell he's doing. Yeah, right. Um, and if you prefer a more one-on-one -on -one experience, the shameless plug was the U Hunt sessions. Um, I'm going to leave those up for free until too many people book them where I just can't keep up. And then I'm going to start charging. So enroll right now. Uh, when you listen to this, 
go book a session, do your homework ahead of time, book, book me a session for, for a week or two out, and then we'll get back together, you know, we'll assess where you're at, and I'll help you get to the next step, whether it's scouting your new property, or if you're not sure where to go, if you want advice on one of, you know, picking a hunting lease in your area, I can give you that, that more personalized guidance, and if I can't do it, I'll get you to an external link or somebody who knows a little bit better in your area who does. And we'll make sure that you get out and at least get into the deer woods a couple times this year. Cause that's what I want for the people listening. To Amen to that. All right, boys, 10 30 checking out. Thanks Jonesy for heard you're falling this. asleep over here. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard a kid scream, so I think we're okay. No, nah, he's in. Yeah, he's in. Mine's in bed. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's in. He's in REM sleep. Thanks for right staying now. up late with me, guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Thank no you, worries. boys. It was fun. Fun time. Appreciate it. Take yeah, it easy. Good. Yeah, be, be good. Get Feed him, Danny. Later. Feed him. Yeah.